Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain spread spectrum with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, first of all, I will discuss about basics of spread spectrum. After that, I will explain parameters of spread spectrum. After that, I will discuss about key characteristics of spread spectrum. After that, I will explain block diagram and working of spread spectrum. And at last, I'll discuss about significance of spread spectrum. So let us start this video with first agenda. That is basics of spread spectrum. First of all, let me explain the meaning of spread spectrum. See, using spread spectrum, what we do is we increase the bandwidth of message signal. Let us consider we have a message signal that is having narrow bandwidth. Then after spread spectrum, we will be having wider bandwidth. Let me take one example. Let us have an example of voice call. So if you talk about voice call, then here message is voice. One should know voice is having bandwidth around 3 to 4 kilohertz. But when you have voice call with the use of CDMA technology, then with that CDMA channel, you will be having bandwidth in terms of megahertz. So here with the use of spread spectrum, with the use of CDMA, we will be broadening the bandwidth. So original signal that is having narrow bandwidth. After spread spectrum, we will be having wider bandwidth, right? So spread spectrum, that is a modulation technique in which a signal is spread over a wide range of frequencies. It will be much wider than the minimum bandwidth required to transmit the information. If you talk about digital data, then with message signal, we will be having bit rate. Using spreading sequence, we will be having higher data rate compared to input data. Let me explain that graphically. Let us consider here we have a message signal that is having narrow bandwidth over here. Then after spread spectrum, we will be having wider bandwidth. So here transmitted signal that will be having wider bandwidth. That bandwidth is denoted by BSS. Here message signal is having bandwidth B and transmitted signal that is having bandwidth BSS. This bandwidth is way greater compared to the bandwidth which is there with message signal. For example, if you talk about voice call, then with voice call, message signal will be having bandwidth in terms of 3 to 4 kilohertz. But after CDMA spread spectrum, output signal will be there in terms of megahertz. So using spread spectrum, we will be providing wider bandwidth to transmitted signal, right? If you talk about types of spread spectrum, then there are in general two categories. First one is the regarding analog systems that is FHSS, frequency hoping spread spectrum and second one is DSSS that we use it in digital systems. DSSS means direct sequence spread spectrum. Regarding FHSS and DSSS, I'll make separate video in this video lecture series. Right now consider spread spectrum that we use it to increase the bandwidth of message signal. In case of digital system, at output side, we will be having higher data rate compared to message signal data rate, right? Now, let me discuss about parameters of spread spectrum. First of all, I'll discuss about parameter, which is there regarding analog system. That parameter is spreading factor that is also referred as processing gain. Processing gain or spreading factor, that is a ratio of spread bandwidth divided by message bandwidth. One should know message bandwidth is lower compared to spread bandwidth, right? And due to higher bandwidth that we are transmitting, this GP value that will be way greater than unity. This spreading factor that we use it in analog systems like frequency hooping spread spectrum. If you talk about digital systems, then in digital systems, we use number of chip per bit that is referred as capital N. 
number of chip per bit that will be RC divided by RB. This RB belongs to data rate of message and this RC regarding data rate of chip. So here transmitted data rate that will be higher compared to actual message data rate. So this N will define how much increase in data rate is there, right? This number of chip per bit that we use it to analyze digital systems like DSSS, direct sequence spread spectrum and spreading factor GP that we use it to analyze analog systems like FHSS. Regarding FHSS and DSSS, I'll make separate video in this video lecture series. Now, let me explain key characteristics of spread spectrum. See, with spread spectrum, we will be having wider bandwidth in analog systems and by employing pseudo random codes, one can have digital systems that even I'll explain you in future coming videos how one can employ digital systems using pseudo random codes. See, it provides interference resistance. If you have wider bandwidth, then one can have better interference resistance. It will enhance security and multipath rejections. So these are the key characteristics which is there with spread spectrum. Now let me explain block diagram. If you observe block diagram of transmitter, then here we have message signal. This message signal that is having narrow bandwidth. Here this message signal is given to modulator. Modulator is also referred as spreader. So after modulation, here we will be having wider bandwidth that we give it to antenna and that is transmitted over wireless channel. Here second input to this modulator that will be frequency synthesizer and frequency of frequency synthesizer that is depending on input given over here that input is generated by PN sequence generator. So PN sequence generator that will give a code to frequency synthesizer and based on this code here carrier frequency is generated and modulated signal that is being transmitted over here. See this is about analog system but if you talk about digital system then instead of this two block there will be chip sequence right. In one of my interview I have received one question that was based on what is PN sequence. See PN sequence is pseudo random noise sequence. So if you observe the name pseudo random noise then you might be thinking like that will be random sequence but no. See PN sequence that is appearing like random sequence but that is periodic and that can be identified and that can be identified based on the code. So here transmitter and receiver both knows the code and based on that they will be having communication as per random sequence right. So this random sequence is periodic and that can be determined remember this name is pseudo random noise code right but that code is periodic and that could be identified. If you observe receiver block diagram then that is quite opposite to this transmitter via channel antenna will receive sequence and that received data that is given to demodulator input to this demodulator that is frequency synthesizer that will be generating same frequency as it is generated over here and here also we have PN sequence generator that will be generating same sequence as it is available over here. So here one thing is quite clear see this PN sequence that is generating random sequence but that is deterministic and it is periodic and that is only known to transmitter and receiver because of which here on channel there will be security right. If you observe this PN sequence then for random people it will be appearing like noise signal but 
this transmitter and receiver can decode those things right now let me discuss about significance of spread spectrum see spread spectrum is used to provide wider bandwidth and one should know wider bandwidth offers many advantages over narrow band communication if you observe message signal that is having lower bandwidth after spread spectrum we have wider bandwidth if you talk about first significance then that offers resistance to interference and jamming one should know wide band signals are harder to disrupt if you talk about narrow band signal then jamming is efficient but if you have wider band signal then jamming will not work right if you talk about second advantage then that provides security and confidentiality one should know correct code that is available to transmitter and receiver only at transmitter and receiver side we have pn sequence generator and that correct code that is available at transmitter and receiver side so for others signal will look like noise right that's why it will provide security and confidentiality if you talk about next significance then that offers multipath resistance here multipath resistance that is getting reduced the reason is here we are having wider bandwidth if you have wider bandwidth then fading caused by environmental reflection that is getting reduced if you talk about next significance then that is based on multiple access capability like we use spread spectrum in cdma code division multiplexing that offers access of same bandwidth using different cores so one can share same bandwidth using different cores because of which one can use similar bandwidth with multiple user right here cores will be orthogonal to each other so those cores will give minimum interference to each other even though you use same bandwidth next advantage that is based on low probability of detection see here we will be having signal power that is spreaded out right so making it appear like noise to others so here lower probability of detection is there with others and other people cannot intercept it so here due to spread spectrum one can have higher security as well as there will be lower effect of interference the reason is if you have message signal that is having bandwidth in terms of kilohertz and if you transmit it in terms of megahertz then here it will offer higher resistance to interference at higher frequencies you will be having long range communication even so spread spectrum is very very essential in communication in future coming videos i'll discuss about fhss and direct sequence spread spectrum that will gives you more clarity about how we have analog systems and digital systems still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video